Welcome to the President and CEO Focus on the Middle Market podcast series, where President and CEO founder Paul Stuckel discusses middle market issues with business leaders from across the nation. Today, Paul speaks with Peter Zafino, President and CEO of risk management giant Marsh, about how big data and predictive analytics are revolutionizing the insurance industry. It's in the risk management field. Um, could you just maybe take a moment and explain the basic concept of a risk-related analytics technology? Certainly, it's, it's a great question, and we're trying to really evolve how uh, you know companies think about risk in the insurance sector. I think traditionally, it's been a, a very binary discussion where you know we look at property risks or workers' compensation risks and find uh, what we think are the best uh, solutions for those specific products and then, you know, go to the insurance industry and try to find the best policy. Uh, it's been a very static type of, of discussion. And so what the journey we've been on uh, is to take a much more holistic view. And what I mean by that is that there are many components of, of risk that need to be considered. And so if you think uh, in the simplest terms of, of a property risk, there's hurricane, there's fire, uh, there's earthquake. And a lot of times the industry is, is so big that it, it does tend to uh, draw solutions around averages. And so what we have done uh, has been taking, again, a holistic view of all the components of risk. And so we will take many different data points. Um, we'll look at uh, the different probabilities of, uh, of a hurricane actually happening in that geography, what happens to a building. Uh, we look at tail risk, and, and how we think about tail risk is the very low probabilities, but you know, could be a, a very large severity. So you think about what happened in Japan um, with uh, with the earthquake followed by the tsunami, a very, very low probability, but when it happens, it's severe. And, and how do businesses think about that? And so we take it from the most basic level of, of figuring out, um, you know, what the exposures are and, and how you put that through a uh, normal risk analytics. But then we want to take it further. And so then we start looking at volatility. Um, and then we run stochastic models. And so we may have uh, over 100,000 data sets and simulations that we'll run to see what is the volatility around the actual expected outcome. And what we find um, in the insurance industry is it could be significant. The standard deviation at times could be greater than the mean. And so if that's the case, uh, tail risk is could be much more prevalent uh, for companies. And are they protecting themselves in the event that that happens. And so then we take predictive analytics and show them what the possible range of outcomes may be with the heavy use of data uh, and, and with new technology uh, that we have in analytics to take that holistic view. You don't think about talking about stochastic modeling and insurance. You don't think about talking about predictive yeah. capabilities or tail risk. And, uh, you know, for our larger clients, what ends up happening is that, you know, we want to look at cost of capital. And, you know, so the cost of capital may be less expensive, even though they may have significant financial wherewithal to not buy insurance and they want to, you know, take more risk on their balance sheet. We tend to say that may not be the right question. It may not be uh, the right approach because the cost of capital may be less expensive uh, in the insurance sector to protect yourselves from the volatility. Uh, and then, therefore, you have more capital to deploy in growing your business. Right. Now, in, in terms of the, the um, your own sort of proprietary models um, and your own proprietary technologies, how, how does that work? And, and I, you know, the, the, it had mentioned that it might be real time. Uh, and when I, when I say how does it work, I guess what I mean is, um, what are the inputs? I mean, are the inputs sort of real time? I mean, I, I go back and I think about the uh, in Enron back in the day, where they would actually be using current weather models to, for, you know, to anticipate things so that they could price risk in oil futures and those kind of things. You know, those, really that sort of high-tech, real-time uh, concept. Um, is that kind of what you do? I mean, is that the real-time element of it? I mean, what are, the, what are the inputs into your technology? Well, the key input is the data. And, and the data, um, you know, certainly how we update the modeling and how we present it to clients is real time. And, and when we talk about real time is not using stale data. Uh, I won't give you the same analysis um, uh, in three months from now or in a week from now that I give you today because there's dynamics that change in the market. Uh, there may be new inputs in terms of claims records. And so what we're suggesting on, on real time is taking as rich of a data set as, as we can find that has relevance 
Uh, so if you think about a manufacturing company, uh, they're not particularly interested um, in outputs from a financial institution. They want to have similar data input uh, from companies that, that may look like them. So we synthesize the data. You cannot um, you know, tell if it is um, you know, one company. It's such a large and rich database uh, that there's a lot of credibility in that database. And then how we then take that and use it for relevant output um, is real time. And so we update it, uh, you know, depending on the specific client. Um, when we present it, again, it's not in a static form. So we actually uh, will go to a client or to a prospect and talking about the different options for insurance um, live. We usually use an iPad, and algorithms are built into uh, the output uh, for us to have those real-time discussions. So we don't try to solve, um, you know, the issue by coming in with just the solution. You remember the old PowerPoints and uh, they come in with a 60 pager and the client uh, within uh, one minute wants to flip to the solution and, and that's right. And so we get right to the solution but we play with the different variables and make different adjustments based on how they are viewing risk. Uh, so it, it is a real time dyna dynamic uh, modeling output that allows us to have the discussion across the table and change uh, all the different variables depending on client risk appetite and how they're viewing uh, their specific account. Yeah, and I would think with the, I presume that with the this uh, accumulation of data and frankly the accumulation of outputs, um, that you know you probably get a lot of uh, remarkably current uh, and I guess dynamic uh, in uh, perspectives on the kinds of risks that are out there. Um, and, 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 and thereby can provide the, the value of, to your clients of saying, you know, look here, here are some risks that you may not have considered in, because we've seen this across sort of the spectrum of, of our data. Is that accurate? No, it's, it's a really good point, and um, it's quite insightful because when you take a lot of data, and, and everyone has a big data strategy, but you know, what you use it for, for insight uh, or value to clients is, is very important. And, and you know, to give you some, some frame of reference is that um, we are an intermediary or a broker, and so we will place um, insurance on behalf of, of our clients, and uh, we put about $55 billion into the market every single year. Um, and so with that comes a ton of information uh, that we aggregate. And like you said before, which is incredibly important, is how do you do it by industry? How do you segment it from a large client to a small client? To a medium-sized client, how do you look at global clients? And so, can can your uh, company connect an enormous global infrastructure? So we're in 130 countries, um, and do you have a level balance that you can end up giving clients advisory, uh, no matter where they are in the world? And so that's what we have built. Uh, so if we want to go down to um, a very small client, you know, they may have um, a requirement that has different information. Uh, they may have um, a request for output that is more relevant to their industry. And so we take, uh, you know, again, you can pick healthcare, uh, pick real estate. Uh, we want to dig very deep on the specific industries, have a rich data set um, that if there's credibility that they're large enough, we like to use a lot of their own data to synthesize. But if they're not large enough, we use our industry data uh, to give uh, credibility and we measure their uh, data against that credible data set. And so it's, it's a really dynamic way of looking at risk, but it doesn't matter what size you are because uh, we can drive solutions with the use of that data and analytical output and interactive uh, with real-time market data uh, to give them the best information today. As, as part of that process, I mean, have you discovered, I'm sorry, how long, have, <clears throat> excuse me, how long has this been out there in the marketplace or how long have you been using it, this well, technology? We have um, introduced uh, really the advanced technology over the last three years, but I would say it's become uh, much more global and, and our ability to execute on it really in the last 12 to 18 months. So in the process of that, I mean, as, you, as your, your ability to utilize the data has become more refined and, and broader and deeper, presumably, um, have, have there been risks that, ha I mean, specific risks that heretofore have, may have, gone missing, uh, but that you've actually found in the data to be much more prevalent or much more um, much more important than anyone had previously thought before? Uh, there's, there's, again, a really very good question, and I, I would answer it in two different ways. One is 
through the use of, of data uh, and the stochastic modeling, we've made our clients much more uh, aware of, of what does tail risk look like, what, what is possible, and then if it happens, you know, what are the implications financially for them and how should they be buying insurance. Secondly is, is an emerging risk that has come out just based on a tremendous amount of data sets, but really predicting what's going to happen in the future, not necessarily what's happening today, uh, is cyber risk. It is a real concern uh, for companies, and I think one that's going to become uh, bigger over time uh, just based on uh, data breaches, uh, security breaches, um, and are there products that can respond to uh, cyber attacks, and you know what is the real exposure for them, and what could be the implications uh, from their balance sheet and, and, and reputational risk, and so how can we help model that, how can we help um, you know, quantify uh, what the risk is and how they should, you know, remedy that. Cyber is a big uh, emerging issue that is going to be with us for a while. Be sure to check back for future episodes of the President and CEO Focus on the Middle Market podcast series. Thanks for listening.